before the break, uh, the break, we were talking about the news that Trisha's cancer has returned. It's once again highlighted the importance of our campaign, Don't Skip Your Screening. And today we're joined by a woman who avoided them for eight years before her own diagnosis. Please welcome Kelly Hoppen. <laughs> Thank you for coming on to, to support our campaign with this, Kelly, because it's hugely important for people to understand the importance of not skipping um, their screening. And so is it true that you didn't go to your screenings for eight years? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous being on this. Um, it's such a personal thing, but for me, talking about it is sort of like therapy for me to get to the next point. And my mother had had breast cancer, actually at the same age and the same breast cancer, oh, really? which I only found out later. And so every year I just sort of went, I'm just, if I don't know, it's fine. Yeah. So the and fact that your mum had had it didn't make yes, you even more... It makes me even more stupid, right. you know. And, but but was it was fear, though? Total fear. Yeah. But for me it was about I can just get on with my life, not know about it yeah. and everything mm. would be fine. And every year I would book it and I would cancel it. And on this one morning, I woke up and I just went, you've got to go and get tested. But on the day that I was driving there, I called my... I took a picture because there was a proper traffic jam. It wasn't moving and I thought, great. Took a picture, sent it to someone at the studio and they called me back and they went, they're going to wait. Mm, and I sign, went there yeah. and that's when it all began. I had the mammogram. And they sent me home. Mm -hmm. But I kept thinking to myself, why hadn't they done an ultrasound? Within an hour, they called me and said, no, you have to come back. So immediately, I was just full oh, of oh, dread, oh. you know, having got through that whole actually gone and mm. said, oh, well done. Um, went back, they did the ultrasound, and they said, we now need to do a biopsy. And luckily, oh. my partner was with me. And um, I, at that point, I went deaf. I, I literally couldn't hear mm. anything. Yeah. And they said, well, you can't have the biopsy now because you weren't referred by a doctor. And so I left, called my doctor, and they gave me this amazing doctor, who I will never forget, who then started the whole process. Yeah. I then had to go through the whole thing again, going to the clinic, having the mammogram, having all of this, and then you're taken into a little room. And I remember looking at John and going, this is not good news. And the whole time he kept saying, no, it's fine. I went, mm. no, I know it's not. Yeah. But I was very, very lucky that I had DCIS, I think it's called, and it was pre-cancer in the milk duct. So they were hoping it was contained. But the process of actually then how the procedure was where you're literally having, like, as if you're having a mammogram mm. and they inject... Um, anaesthetic, and then they take the cancer cells out, I nearly passed out because it so was just a fear, completely awake. Yeah. But there was a, a kind of feeling of relief knowing yeah. that it, hopefully it was out. Getting it out. Yeah. But then it was like, well, no, now we've got to operate to take the tissue around to mm. make sure that Sarah. it's gone. Yeah. But when I went to have the MRI, they thought they saw something in the left. So I had to relive the whole, whole thing, thing again. But, look, it's done, and I got a year clear, which nice. is amazing. That's a great I think mean, one, thing, one thing that I know um, Katie mentioned when we were talking about this earlier is, case like, you're so fit, you're so healthy, you eat yeah. really well, and a lot of people wrongly connect um, certain cancers to somehow living your life uh, you know, not badly, but just not healthily. Mm. And you're the complete opposite of that. I know, but I think a lot of it, sadly, is genetic. Genetics. So when mm. I was then... And the weird thing is that the clinic I went to to go and have the, the mammogram, the doctor who looked after my mother, who only worked occasionally as, a, like, a sort of consultant, yeah. walked through wow. no. and no wait for this. She was the one that called me back. Mm. I mean, how wow. extraordinary yeah. is that? So then I spoke to her and I said, when did my mother have it and what did she have? Because my mother is very old now and, you know, sort of can't remember yeah. anything. And, and she said she was 60 and it was exactly the same. But she had to have radiation. I was lucky enough not to not have you. either. Um, and you didn't have any symptoms before the scan, not an inkling? Had you been checking? And, had you been checking no, yourself? See, that's the other thing. 
But for me now, I go in five weeks for my next checkup, mm. so it's six months now, mm. and coming on here is therapy for me because mm. I am telling the world that I'm going in, in mm -hmm. six weeks and I'm, you know, manifesting that it's all going to be and fine. And it will be, yeah. And it will be, but the point is, it's work in progress. So what I want to say to women out there that are watching, I get it. Yeah. And even after what I went through, I'm still making my mind get to the point. And I'm almost there mm. where I'm sort of excited to have the, the test, mm. because if I can get past that, I now realise even if something was something, Something was there. I know they that can... you're in the right place to have. And this, they this, this is what Beast, you've yeah. been through yeah, exactly you've been the through same it. thing. And, but yours, was yours a in... similar cancer? Well, it was, but unfortunately, mine was mine was already in there, so um, I had to have. That's why I had the mastectomy yeah. and lymph glands removed and everything. But um, but what I what I loved about what you were saying, ther the therapeutic side of things, for me. It, after I got my first year of free of cancer, I went out and celebrated with my friends. Did you do something like that, uh, or did you choose to I'm, I don't stay drink quiet? very much, but... You don't need I, to have a drink to celebrate, you like, oh. <laughs> but, Drink? But, but when I do, I drink. <laughs> and, uh, it was we, more dancing, I went out There partying. was a lot of yeah. dancing, drinking, but do you know what it's done for me? I, I have a really press, pressurised job every day, and I love it. But every single day now, I promise you, I wake up and my first thought is, I'm healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's made such a such difference. A difference. Yeah. I can't even yeah. begin to tell you. Well, you're also very passionate as a woman about not being put in a box um, around age and that ageing is something that's a privilege. And, yeah, yeah. you know, you've really spoken about that and changing that landscape for, for women coming into their 50s, 60s. I know, well, I'm 65 this year. I mean, I I'm like... Same as me! nothing but a number there, it's Kelly. a number, mm. you know, and when I said to John, oh, my God, you know, a friend of ours is doing a party for her 65 and I went, oh, I think I'll wait. Like, I'm 63 this year. And he went, no, you're 65. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thanks for that. <laughs> but, but no, I mean, I just... Honestly, the only time I thought about my age was in COVID when I was trying to get the vaccine. <laughs> Other than that, I've yeah. never... I've honestly never thought yeah. about it. And I don't think women should. You're as young as you feel. Mm. It's all in the mind. Mm. You know, we should be positive. We should be yeah. grateful. Yeah. All of those yeah. things. Yeah. Kelly Hawkins, ladies and gentlemen. That was brilliant. So fantastic. Brilliant.